Hey everyone, welcome back to the JNL Chronicles. I'm John, this is Laurel. Hey folks. So, you've been a busy little bee, haven't you? Yes. I, I have to confess I'm kind of addicted to reading these weird stories now. Well. And I've got a few bangers here. Oh, some bangers. Let's, uh. Let's hear them. These are all uh, stories that were in the New York, New York Times over the years, from the 1800s into the 1900s. So I think we should start with, I'll just read you the headline. Okay. And then tell you about the story. All right. Okay. On September 24th, 1900, Wanted Pickles Fried. Mr. Johnson's desire to vary his diet lands him in Bellevue Mental Hospital. Yeah, now, depending on the pickle, I would say maybe. If it's a Klassen uh, refrigerated dill, those are the best. So, why was he put in... A mental hospital for pickles. Well, he checked into Jager's Hotel. He's from Banger, Maine. And... Well, you did say you had some bangers. I did say I had some bangers. <laughs> and uh, when they asked him what he wanted for dinner, he said to just send him up some pickles. That doesn't sound very filling. No, but then he... Uh, called for supper, and then he asked for two courses of pickles and a course of crackers. Again, that's not what I would consider a meal. <laughs> no, but that's what he wanted to eat. I've gone through wanting pickles a lot. We've had several jars of pickles in the fridge at a time. <laughs> but this poor man... He kept wanting pickles, and he really wouldn't talk to anybody in the hotel except for the cook about his pickles. And so all the days he was eating the pickles. And uh, he had a request, a very odd request. Okay. Uh, weirder than just pickles and crackers? presented in the wackiest way one would. So he opens up, he goes to the cook and he opens up his wallet and he pulls out this paper and he begins to read to the cook. And I quote, take some cucumbers when quite green from the garden while unseen. Soak them long in salt and mush, add your spices, watch them rust. For some days, let them lie, take them out, in slices fry. That's a dish which one sings, so good it is, it's fit for kings. That's a pretty good poem, but... Uh, <laughs> I've had fried pickles before, I'm not a fan. Uh, no, I didn't care for the fried pickles either. No, but, uh... But the cook instantly thinks he's a nut job. Well... Well, that's what he tells. The, I, I wouldn't call it that. If you're in the mood for pickles, you're I, in the mood for pickles. It doesn't mean you're incapacitated just because you're in the mood for one particular food. Maybe it was the frying of the pick well maybe it was the poem the matter of fact he wrote a poem about how to cook his pickles <laughs> maybe the cook was like i've i've known a lot of a lot of weird people but none of them have ever told me a poem about pickles <laughs> this is uh this is unsettling <laughs> i am disturbed i am shocked he did he went to the proprietor of the hotel and told him this guy's crazy he only <laughs> eats pickles and the proprietor 
agreed with him. Now, I have thought people were crazy before for things, but I don't go calling mental hospitals on them. It's like, know, oh, that's that guy, so rude. That guy's doing something kind of weird. Huh? Eh, he's crazy. Not so rude. Not 911. We have an emergency. He wants pickles. Fried. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. It's it's Over not fried pickles. It's not called called mental hospital crazy. Exactly. Exactly. And so the proprietor calls the police department and the patrolman decides that he agrees with him. <laughs> and the cop thought it was so crazy that he wanted pickles fried and he wrote a poem about it? Yes. Yes. So after some days of him staying there with, you know, only eating the pickles and now the cook telling the proprietor he's crazy, he wants to ruin perfectly good pickles by frying them. Wait, wait, wait. That's what the cook said. He wants to ruin perfectly good pickles by frying them. Was he that uptight about his pickles? <laughs> Apparently. Like, how dare you alter the my vision of pickle? <laughs> you love my pickle without being fried before, and now you want to slap the pickle in the face and throw <laughs> it in the fryer? That, that, to me, seems crazy. Maybe instead of having the guy who loved the pickle so much put in the mental hospital, maybe the chef who was so egotistical... To not want to alter his pickle by frying it. Maybe he's the one that should have been put in the mental hospital. Yes, right? Poor Mr. Johnson. Yeah. He just wanted some pickles. And he wanted to vary them up by having them fried that particular time. Well, you can time. only have un you know regular pickles so many days in a row. Now you want a hot dish. Yeah. But yeah. you love pickles. It should have been an honor for that chef to be like, this guy loves my pickles so much. Well, it should have been, but they thought perhaps he suffers from dementia because he keeps just on and on and on ordering pickles. Or he could have been pregnant. Oh. Just saying. I never craved pickles when I was pregnant. Yeah. I can't relate. But Mr. Johnson likes his pickles, and he should have had his pickles. If I go to a restaurant, and if I want pickles, I want pickles. I'll pay for them. I mean, nevertheless... Um, so, for a while, Mr. Johnson refused to go. I would have, too. With the Bellevue ambulance. And then uh, he finally asked defiantly, you got any pickles over there? <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the person in the ambulance said, yes, whole vats of them. Wow. And then Mr. Johnson hastily got into the ambulance and went... Away. Man loved his pickles so much that he'd be willing to be put away in a hospital for more pickles. To have his pickles. Poor guy probably didn't get any pickles there either. I know. I feel so bad for Mr. Johnson. He just wanted some pickles. There are much more dangerous people on the streets. You know, I'd much rather be... You know, have a guy who just wants some pickles come up to me and ask me for some pickles. Then some guy right? come up to me and, like, shank me. Right? I don't I don't know what they were thinking. That's, that's insane. Shame, yeah. shame. 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 Uh, and uh, number two, why don't we go with... Okay. On March 11th, 1929, two monkeys make a madhouse of pet shop, kill canaries, upset goldfish, bite turtles, and police, 
and bring a call for firemen. That was the headline. Okay. I just want to say something. Kill canaries. Fight police. And upset fish? <laughs> yes. Upset the goldfish. <laughs> did they ask the fish? Did, they, did the fish tell them? Oh, we are so upset. No, apparently he dumped them out on the floor. I, well, I would be quite upset if I was a fish that got dumped out on fish. the floor. <laughs> well, no, they were still alive. The police rescued the, pit, the goldfish. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm corrected. That would also upset me then. <laughs> I, I would not have to be asked if I was upset by that. I would definitely be upset. <laughs> and I would. If I was tossed out on the, to the floor? Yeah. Well, by. A crazed monkey that's uh, killing canaries and biting people? Yeah, I, I think that would upset me quite a bit. Yes, but this baboon has a reason. And so do his little smaller monkey friends. So a policeman was walking down the street. And he, then he saw broken glass in the pet shop. And it looked just looked disarray. So he went in there. And the baboons started throwing things at him. And you could you could say they were monkeying around. <laughs> yes, yes. But the patrolman goes to the fire department and gets the sergeant. And they go over there, and they try to. This is a two-hour-long battle. <laughs> a two-hour-long battle with monkeys. Yes. Because the baboon started releasing uh, the smaller monkeys that were in oh. cages. And then he uh, started turning loose the livestock. And then after that, when they were trying to get them to calm down, they were throwing things at the police Ooh. and the firemen. So it took two hours to calm the bamboo, baboon down. And, uh, you know. Did they try bananas? <laughs> I don't know. It didn't indicate. So if I see a bunch of monkeys and I want to, you know, get them to stop doing what they're doing, my first thought would be some bananas. Uh, that is a good point. But back in 1929, I don't know what time of day this was. The uh, store was closed. So would there be a grocer open at that time? I don't true. know. It was pretty back in the day. But uh, that's... Uh... Here's a better question. Why were there bamboo <laughs> baboons in a pet store? That's outrageous. I'm sorry. A baboon does not belong in a cage at a pet store. Monkeys don't belong in a cage at a pet store. If I was the baboon and I was stolen from my habitat and put in a cage in a pet shop, I'd be pretty pissed off too. Yeah. I might want to upset some goldfish. I might want to throw things around and turn my uh, smaller monkey friends loose and the livestock. I suppose he probably thought he was saving the goldfish. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Right? In his eye, he was, an, he was a hero liberating him. Yeah, he set loose all the animals in the house. But he killed the canaries. Well, it wasn't a house. It was like a storehouse, oh, a okay. pet shop house. I don't know if I believe that they killed canaries. Allegedly. allegedly. I'll say allegedly canaries. to that one. For all we know, it was the cops who killed the canaries. Yes. Well, no. Why would cops kill canaries? Anyways, uh, they uh, they were able to avoid the situation finally, and the police put the goldfish back in the tanks, and the perplexed turtles were put back into their enclosure. They then got the baboons. Uh, back in their enclosure 
and Mr. Henry Bartles, the owner of the store, arrived toward the end of the battle and said the damage would be several thousand dollars. And that was in 1929. So the dollar was worth $16 today, each so dollar. that would have been $16,000. At least, in damage. But I'm sorry, you don't take a bamboo out of its habitat and lock it in a cage in a pet shop. It's not appropriate. I'd be pissed off, too. Yeah. I'm on the baboon side here. Yeah, so am I. That might make me wacky, but... Mm. No. I guess you can call me wacky. You aren't ordering a whole bunch of pickles right now, so I think we... <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> as yeah. long as I don't order the pickles. When she starts ordering the pickles, that's when I'll be worried. <laughs> And uh, there's one last one. Oh, okay. Okay. It says, and this was on June 26th of 1937. Monster of Loch Ness now raising a family. So there's little Nessies out there? Yes, that's what the newspaper said. So... They, it's not just one Nessie. There are two Nessies because purportedly there Multiple. were little Nessies, a litter of Nessies being born. That's, first off, the <laughs> thing I want to say about Nessie, obviously real. We've seen videos of it <laughs> that were definitely not logs. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not trash uh, being dragged around in no. the lake by the water current. And definitely not just a big fish. Definitely not a big catfish. But the science teacher, um, Mr. Wedge, uh, whose school was attached to the Benedictine Abbey of Fort Augustus, stands at the head of Loch Ness. And Mr. Wedge said that his students, his boys, were telling them that they were seeing these three-foot monsters, uh, th three-foot Nessies. How old were these boys? It didn't indicate. Because uh, they're kids. I believe at one point I told my mom I had... Uh, a talking plant <laughs> after I had seen uh, Little Shop of Horrors a couple too many times. But I'm pretty sure the plant didn't actually talk, but I I, I told her it did. You actually had a Venus live trap? No, it was just a plant. Oh. <laughs> that I wanted to be a talking, singing That was a good movie. Plant. <laughs> that was a good movie. That's a classic. So just because someone says they saw something doesn't mean. Right. Well, this is Especially a science a teacher. Kid. This is a science teacher. And what he said, and I quote, is they should use the diving bell to explore underwater caverns where fed warm by warm springs, the last survivors of prehistoric monsters still contrive to exist. That's what he told the paper. Hmm. A science teacher. Yeah. A science teacher. Well. It couldn't have been catfish that the boys saw. No. No, it was definitely Nessie. We have used so much, so much technology now to look for Nessie. We have... You know, the best diving equipment available, the best underwater radar. Indeed. The best uh, it, underwater cameras, and we've seen nothing. Yeah. At this point, I think we can lay Nessie to bed. And that we know that famous photo was fake. The guy yeah. came out and said it was fake. 
So it, it was a toy boat rigged with something or right or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that lands on the. It gets a headline in the New York Times. Must have been a slow week. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, it had to have been. Or maybe it was around the time that famous photo came out. And they were like, ooh, there's a Loch Ness story. Let's, let's go with it. This is hot. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Might just be. Uh, the New York Times got that story out of London. Yeah. So a London paper had been writing about the Scottish lock. Well, when when events like that happen, it, it does kind of... It be pre-social media times. It... The, the right, New York that's Times... their internet, yeah. I guess, I suppose. You know, someone had to report on it. And instead of clicks, it was nickels. <laughs> I wonder if it was even a nickel back then. Probably not. If a thousand dollar, or if every dollar was worth six, so 16. yeah. So every thousand dollars is sixteen thousand dollars. I feel that a newspaper would probably be pretty cheap. Yeah. It, it was the affordable gossip at the time. And people loved their newspapers. And uh, I myself have gotten quite addicted to looking at these old newspaper articles because they're really abnormal. <laughs> the writing back then, they, they seem to have much better writers. Yes, I loved the line from the other day. A feathered fiend of the gas habit. Yes. That, <laughs> I love that That's some quality writing. Well, unless uh, you got something uh, about Sasquatch coming in, <laughs> I think that's all we have for today. Yep. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. And if you like what you saw, hit the like button if you didn't dislike it. And if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below, please. Or if you have something you'd like us to talk about or investigate.